Alzheimer's disease is a tragedy, but in reality, it is one of the diseases that clearly will not benefit from the possible potential of embryonic stem cell treatments. Yet a possible cure for this emotionally painful progressive disease is almost always mentioned by non-researchers trying to gain favor among the public for human embryonic stem cell research. But researchers will provide you with a different picture. Unlike other stem cells, embryonic stem cells form tumors. As such, they can never be used just as embryonic stem cells. They must be differentiated out into mature or adult tissue and even then, the risk of tumor formation remains. As such, any reparative therapies involving human embryonic stem cells require surgically removing and replacing mature tissue with the created tissue. So these cellular therapies would be limited to conditions with damage to just small and specialized areas. No one knows what actually causes Alzheimer's disease, so an actual cure is unrealistic. But the symptoms may be addressed. Alzheimer's disease involves the functional loss of huge numbers and varieties of the brain's 100 billion nerve cells and the countless connections and synapses among them. In Alzheimer's, there are two significant changes in the brain, twisted or tangled nerve cell fibers and protein deposits known as neuritic plaques. The neurofibrillatory tangles are the damaged remains of microtubules, and these can be found in those not expressing Alzheimer's disease symptoms. A high concentration of the beta amyloid plaques obstruct function of neurotransmitters or the brain's chemical messengers. One possible treatment for Alzheimer's disease is being studied at the Washington University of Medicine. A team led by Dr. Robert Bredsta discovered that as plaques appeared, nearby branches of nerve cells developed bumps or swellings. Plaque-laden mice were given injections of an antibody for key components of these plaques and the swellings rapidly disappeared. And so, um, you know, when I think about that and think about what's happening um, with Alzheimer's research right now in stem cells, uh, particularly the Weizmann uh, Institute in Israel is a place that's making some great breakthroughs with Alzheimer's. Um, you know, it really, it kind of led me to say, hey, you know, what's the deal? Why aren't we doing this? There is nothing inherent in current Michigan law that prevents us from doing exactly what the Weizmann Institute in Israel has done with embryonic stem cells and Alzheimer's. You see, the Weizmann Institute does work with embryonic stem cells, and it has made some great breakthroughs with Alzheimer's. But it has not made great breakthroughs with Alzheimer's using embryonic stem cells. The embryonic stem cells used in the Weizmann Institute are generally taken at the latter end of embryonic development gestationally the seventh to eighth week. For example, in one highly acclaimed experiment, they took kidneys from aborted fetuses at the seventh to eighth week of human embryonic development and placed them in mice, where they grew into functional and mature kidneys. The work most likely to benefit neurodegenerative patients, like those with Alzheimer's, addresses these diseases as a result of autoimmune responses. More recent studies confirm that toxicants attack stem cells, disrupting normal cell function, including the divisions that create new mature tissues in the brain. The head researcher at the Weizmann autoimmune study was the one person that Christopher Reeve wanted to meet when he went to Israel. In 1996, she founded a company called ProNeuron. ProNeuron works with neural stem cells, but not the kind that come from embryos and have shown good results in helping people recover from accident-induced paralysis. There are no legal restrictions to prevent Michigan researchers from doing these types of experiments today.